This is your worship email from First Church of Guilford, Connecticut for Sunday, May 24th, 2020. Welcome to First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, Guilford, Connecticut. This morning, like many churches in the UCC, we are fond of saying, whoever you are and wherever you are in life's journey, you're welcome here. And you are welcome here, just not in the physical building right now. You're welcome to be at home, in your kitchens, in your living rooms, in your gardens, being with us in worship this day. We are thankful that you are here. And as we gather this morning, I'd like to give the names of the people who are putting together all of our worship services. My colleague, Jake Joseph, Bill Speed, Judy Wallace, Corinne Eskridge, Penelope Rebazzini are all part of the worship team. And my name is Ginger Brasher Cunningham. And we are glad that you are here today. As we gather, one of the things that we do is we take deep breath in and a deep breath out. And we invite you to do the same right now. So let us breathe in together and breathe out. And as we do so, roll our shoulders back, open our hands and our hearts and our minds, recognizing that we are in a new and different way of being. Together, we breathe in the breath of God. We breathe out the love of God. And we continue now in our time of worship. Welcome to today's 1016 moment. Today, I'm going to do something, and I want you to try to guess what I'm doing. Okay? Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Ugh, I have to go to the grocery store today. And so, this is what happens. I get in my car, and then I get to the store, and I have to put on my mask. Right? And then I have to put on my gloves and I have to make sure that my grocery bags are clean. Um, I really don't like using plastic since we had gotten past that. So I have to make sure I've got these in my car. And then I get into the store and 
go down the aisle when I'm getting things and they don't have toilet paper and I need toilet paper in my house. And they don't have dish detergent and I need dish detergent. Oh my gosh, goodness. And I also, for some reason, they don't have the snack that is my boy's favorite. Ugh, I'm going to have to go to another store and I really don't want to. Alright, can you guess what I was doing? I was complaining. Yes, I was. Do you ever complain? I think most people do complain at some point or another. Maybe it's because you don't have the right snack at home. Maybe your siblings are not sharing with you. Maybe you're on a long car ride and you're just tired of being in the car and you don't want to do that anymore. Sometimes even Kobe complains. If we lose track of time and he's hungry, he barks at us. So tell me this. Are you happy when you're complaining? Probably not. I wasn't happy just now talking about going to the grocery store, but I'm grateful that I have a grocery store to go to. So let's turn this around. God provides for us even when we grumble and even when we complain. We have groceries. My family has food to eat and I am grateful for that. In today's Bible story, God's people had gone on a long, long journey. They were tired. There were no hotels to sleep in. They were hungry. There was no drive through. And they were not in a car. They were walking on this long, long journey. So you can imagine, lots of them were complaining and not happy. But God provided every step of the way. God provided safety and food, manna from heaven, and water from a rock. And so know that God will always provide for us, always, and that he wants us to have hearts of gratitude. That's why you see a lot of hearts around town that say thank you. We are grateful for the people who are working, who are staying at work so that we can have groceries, people in hospitals and doctor's offices who are taking care of us and our health and helping us to get through this time of the pandemic. So today, as we um, end the 1016 moment, I want to just remind you of the words to, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. So think about that. God has the whole world in his hands. You and me, brother. You and me, sister. So please, as you go through your week this week, have a heart of gratitude. Say thank you to the people who are getting your food for you. Say thank you to your siblings and say thank you when you are able to get in the car and go for a ride. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you soon. At this time in the service, we have a time of prayer, joys, and concerns. We invite you to pause the video, take a minute with those watching with you or on your own to go to the worship email, read the prayers of the people, our joys and concerns for ourselves and for the world, shared with the office and the pastors over the past week, read the pastoral prayer and the Lord's Prayer, take time to reflect on these prayers knowing that they are heard by God and held by our whole congregation. Even apart physically, we are still very much together in spirit and prayer. Amen.
Today's worship service comes from the garden again. Except last week we were in the memorial garden across the parking lot. Today we are in the organic garden. We thought it would be in the organic garden because we know that things are growing. Signs of hope in God's creation. Just like in our own lives, we know that things have been dormant for a while. But we too will be budding and growing and able to nurture ourselves and other people. Now if you come past this garden some Sundays or during the week, you will see a few regulars. You'll see Tom and Milton and Anne and Mary Jane. And this past week you would have seen Stephen Dudley tilling up extra space because we're going to grow more. Just like us in our lives, we are going to grow more. Now this morning, our scripture is from the book of Exodus. Hear now these words. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for God has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the congregation, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. God said to Moses, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites, and say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, and on the surface of the wilderness there was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is this? For they didn't know what it was. And Moses replied, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has said. Gather as much of it as each person needs, an omer and a mount, to the person according to the number of persons, all that they're providing for in their own tents. The Israelites did so, some gathering more, some less. But when they measured the amount, those who gathered much had little left over, and those who gathered little had no, no shortage. They gathered as much as each one needed. Moses said to them, Let no one leave any of it over until morning. But they didn't listen. Moses, some left over until morning was there, and it bred worms and became foul. And he was angry with them. Morning by morning, they gathered it as much as they needed. But when the sun grew long and hot, it melted. May God grant us wisdom and understanding to this passage. When I was in high school, I was in a musical ensemble at my church. Ten or twelve of us were chosen from our youth choir. The director wanted to name with spiritual significance, so we brainstormed together and came up with calling the group Manna. I think because we assumed the word meant something like God will provide and because this of the story that Ginger read. Most of the sermons I've heard on this story of God raining bread like dew in the morning have been affirmations that God will take care of us. And that's an important truth. The same one Ginger talked about last week, that we belong to Emmanuel. God with us. We are not alone. But here's the thing. The word manna in Hebrew doesn't mean anything deeply theological. It means, what is it? When they woke up in the morning and the ground was covered with something that was white, says it looked like coriander seed and tasted sweet, and they said, manna? They were trying to figure out what was going on. Does that sound familiar? They were told to not only, to, they were told to only collect what they needed for the day and then trust that there would be more tomorrow. If they tried to save it, to make sure they had food for the future, the stuff soured and became full of worms. Maybe you've had the experience with the leftover box that gets pushed to the back of the fridge. You know what it felt like. They had to learn to trust God 
and take each day as it came. Now again, most of the sermons I've heard on this story stop there. And, and they were good sermons. It's a good story. The daily exercise in trusting God was the inspiration for lines in one of my favorite hymns, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Jesus underlined the same point when he talked about considering the lilies and not worrying about tomorrow. But as I was reading the story this week, I kept going to the end of the chapter and found a verse I had not seen before. Verse 35 reads, And the Israelites ate manna for 40 years until they came to a habitable land. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. The Israelites had escaped from captivity, from generations of slavery and oppression, only to end up in the wilderness, in the desert. Before long, they began complaining, and Moses took their complaints to God, who responded with manna. I have this kind of cosmic image of God handing sandwiches to the kids in the back seat who keep yelling, Are we there yet? Be quiet and eat. What is it? I said eat. I imagine the first few mornings were cause for wonder and even gratitude. Morning by morning they woke up to food for the day. But then they didn't get where they were going or where they thought they were going for 40 years. What they expected to change quickly became the way life was. So I wonder how long it was before they stopped tasting the thankfulness. Being in the wilderness for 40 years meant the, meant the ones who came out of Egypt never knew anything but wilderness. In fact, most of those who left Egypt never got to the promised land. They woke up every morning in the wilderness and said, what is this for the rest of their lives? Eight weeks into our lockdown, perhaps we're getting a taste of what they felt. A lot of days I feel like Bill Murray in Groundhog Day, where he's so exhausted by having to live the same day over and over, and he says, I'll give you a weather forecast. It's going to be cold, and it's going to be gray, and it's going to last the rest of your life. What began as something we hoped would be short time, short term, is now something whose ending we can't predict or control. In my own attempt to begin to understand that we may be in it for the long haul, I wrote this poem last week. Maybe it doesn't get better. You may not want to read past that title, but hear me out. We can't do what we are doing just because we think this won't last and we can get back to the way things are, or were. Maybe it does get better. Actually, maybe it doesn't get better. I know, I already said that, but what if the pandemic pans out into permanence, or as permanent as things ever get? What if we, what if what we took for granted isn't granted? And we're left with life and each other for years, not days. Yeah, I'm going to say it again. Maybe it doesn't get better. Okay, I'll say it another way. Who knows what will happen? Does that help? Faith and hope hunger for uncertainty. Love knows all you can count on in life is someone else and to let someone else count on you because maybe it doesn't get better. Then again, maybe it does. The Israelites had to learn how to live in the wilderness as though that was what life was. Yes, they knew they were supposed to be on their way to the promised land that God had offered, but they couldn't just sit around and wait for the future to come. Because the truth is, 
The future never gets here for any of us. We can't live lives that matter if they are based on what we expect to happen next. We can learn from our past and we can prepare for what we think might happen. But we can live, we can only live today, whatever the circumstances. Most every Sunday morning during the quarantine, I've come into the meeting house to take the picture of Ginger and Jake as they send out the worship service email. Those of you on Facebook see that picture every, every Sunday. It feels strange to be in the room without anyone else there. I long for us to see each other, to be able to hug each other, to be able to sing together, to be able to eat too many snacks at coffee hour. That day may be a long time coming. It feels odd to be standing here in the garden preaching and there's, there's no one here to laugh at the funny parts. The decision about how and when things will begin to open up, when we'll be able to gather in person for worship, or when we'll be able to go out to eat with friends or we get to quit wearing masks are not decisions we get to make directly. We will respond to the circumstances rather than create them. How we spend our days, however, these days, whatever the circumstances, are our decisions to make. We can decide how we will connect, how we find ways to say we love one another, how we take care of each other, how we treat one another, how we ask for help. We can choose to make sure we all have what we need to get through the day. We can choose not to wait for normal to return or for things to get better, but to live today in this strange time as, those the, as though these are the days we have to live. One of my favorite stories about Jesus happened on the night before he was executed, when he washed the feet of the disciples. In a culture that knew only sandals and dirt roads, washing feet was an act of servitude and compassion. The way John tells the story, he says that Jesus, knowing he had come from God and was going to God, knelt down and washed their feet. He wasn't waiting for what was going to happen next or for someone to rescue him. On that day, in that room, he took care of his friends. We too have come from God and are going to God, regardless of circumstance. Whoever we are and whoever we are, wherever we are on life's journey, we are with God and God is with us. We have today to live to breathe in the breath of God, to breathe out the love of God, even when we're wearing masks. To take care of one another, to choose morning by morning new mercies to see. Maybe things will get better. Maybe they won't. Whatever happens, we have come from God and we are going to God and we are traveling together. May we choose to do so, and may we choose to do and say everything we can to remind one another of these things. Amen. At this time in our service, we have our offertory, a chance to give back to each other and to God. One of our practices we've had during email worship is a weekly question on generosity and stewardship. Our question this week is, what gifts do I share with the church? Is it gardening? Is it time? Is it prayer for my fellow members? Reflect on this question for a moment. Remember that your pledges and offerings help continue this ministry. You may mail them to us, drop them through the office door, or pay them online. 
One of our members has described her weekly walk to her mailbox as a liturgical action, a gesture of community and connection, even in these physically separated times. Together we also say our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God for all that love has done. Creator Christ and Spirit One. Amen. For joining us today for worship by email at First Church of Guilford, Connecticut. Join us midweek for our two midweek Facebook Live offerings. On Wednesday from noon to 12:30, there is Live with Ginger and Jake, a Bible study and theological reflection with our ministers. And on Thursdays from noon to 12:30, there is 30 Minutes of Joy with Bill Speed, weekly organ concert series. Blessings. <laughs>